In the last video, we looked at how to make adjustments to the walls in terms of their length to suit brick rod or brick dimensions. We're going to do the same thing now. We're going to delete this. We don't need it anymore. We're going to do the same thing now for concrete blocks or Bessa blocks, uh, which we'll be using in our project rather than brick. But it's good to do both. Now, I would always say don't ever do this. Uh, so I'm going to break my own rule right now. But I'm going to say move, drag a copy, and we're going to drag a copy of this. Let's just make it 20 meters away. Um, laughing in the back of the room. Uh, so why are we doing this? Uh, just, just as a sample. Now, we generally never copy information whenever duplicate information. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll delete this once we're finished. We're only going to keep one of these. Uh, now, the really nice thing about if you already dimension this and put the grid lines in, then it's automatically going to uh, move across when we create a copy. And of course, we can also, rather than having to redraw, uh, we'll turn these snaps off for a bit because they're driving me crazy. All right. uh, we're going to change these walls to be concrete block. I'm going to select all of these, edit, grouping, group. Uh, that, that will just make it easy to manage later. And when I go into the setting, I'll probably look down and find there's one here called BP01, um, 190 block wall plasterboard um, but I can't see one that is just 190 so if I went into that one we see that it's actually 220 because it's got lining now that's not what, what we want to do we want to make one that's got hevel now we can go and do this now and change this now but it's gonna throw off what I'm trying to, to do potentially um, so we're going to have a look at how to do one just with concrete blocks. So to make this simple, I'm just going to change this back to basic. And then I will change this to concrete block and make this 190. Just so I'm not overcomplicating this video. And then we can talk later about how to change this uh, more later. Now with the concrete block, again, what I want to do is have the concrete block centered on the grid line, so that's really good. And I want to have it using the exterior around the outside. Um, but that might even change a bit later. What we might do, just to change this, to stop this from becoming a problem later on, um, is change this to the inside face and change these to the inside face. But uh, just because I don't want to complicate it for now, we'll just leave it as it is. Um, and then we might have to edit it later. Now what I'm going to need to do is to change all of these dimensions so they work with a, a dimension for a concrete block. Now to make this really simple, we've looked at how to use the, the snaps. But to simplify this even more, I'm just going to use the lines again. I'm going to use a red line just to make it really apparent what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to select this. Um, and I'm going to go move, multiply, uh, I might even, sorry, extend this end first just so it's going past my wall. Move, multiply, and I'm going to do a spacing of 200 millimeters. Why? Because a concrete block is 390 by 190, in this case, or at least the type that we're using, and uh, the Increment is 10 mil to allow for mortar, so that gives a, a round increment of 200. So I'm going to multiply these across, and I'm only going to need to go as wide as my brick or concrete block wall. And just so I don't make this hard for myself later, I'm going to group these all together, which will allow me to delete them more easily. So that's already pretty messy, getting pretty complicated. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just change it to a, a blue, a cyan color this time, just so it... um is easily identifiable as a horizontal rather than a vertical. We'll do the same thing, move, multiply, same thing, spread it all the way down so it's slightly past, edit, grouping, group those together. And now we've got uh, a reference line. Again, this is not the, the technical standard way you're supposed to work in Archicad, but there's nothing wrong with working a way that's easy. So if, it, if it's easy and it makes your job simple then I would suggest you do it. Now we can see that 
already we have a situation where to do a 200 mil brick increment, it's sorry, a block increment, we're a mile out of where the um, the grid lines are. So we're going to need to change those quite considerably. In this case, I'm not going to stretch them. Why? It's now going to be hard to stretch because of my grid lines. What I will do instead is then take these, cut, I'm going to put these down on, um, put them on the roof story for now, paste, and because I moved it over 20, um, it's going to be out of the way of my previous building, 20 meters to the right is what I'm getting at. Uh, so now when I go to my roof story, show as trace reference, we're going to see that that's already there for us. Now we can't see those colors. If I wanted to see those colors, what would I have to do? I'd have to go to my trace reference down the bottom and say turn the trace to be original color and then I'd be able to see what that looks like, if that's helpful. Of course it's not necessary. Okay, how do we start adjusting this? I'm using the outside in this case to work out my brick size and I am talking about a 200 millimeter increment but I have to remember my 10 mil tolerance. So I'm going to make this bigger rather than smaller. So in this case, I'm going to uh, separate. So what we, we call this suspend groups to make all these walls individual for now. And I can select my grid and my wall together. And I'm going to drag this, make sure I've just got the right stuff. Yeah, it looks good. I'm going to drag this to this line and then I'm going to bring it back 10 millimeters. Then I'm going to intersect. And before I change any of these other ones, I'll do the same thing down here. Now, we see that I could bring this a long way, but it's probably going to be easier if I just go back this way in this case. And again, 10 mil shorter. Remember to the outside face to do this right. Now I'm going to intersect this as I go, um, rather than wait until the end. Uh, let's just change that. Let's do it now. Here, back 10, and uh, we'll make it bigger again, rather than smaller. Back 10. Why am I going to make it bigger? Because once we make this a concrete block wall and then add a cladding on the outside of it, it's going to make it substantially larger, and that's going to... Um, take up more of my floor space. Intersect. Intersect. Select both, intersect. And finally, intersect. So now we've adjusted this. If we're not sure if that's worked, we'll turn off the trace reference, and then we'll go around and have a look to see if these numbers are to 200 mil increments minus 10 mil where necessary. And we can see they all are. So that's worked really well. That was quite quick. Now I could have done this, of course, using my snaps. I could turn my snaps back on. And if I wasn't sure, I could go down to my snap value and change that distance to 200. And now we can see if that's going to be working. Of course, again, it's still reliant on us sort of making that work. So it's a bit tricky. Um, but it's, it's currently working the way that we want to. And now if we wanted to, we could then turn this into a composite wall where we not only have our, turn the snaps back off for a second, where we not only have our structural wall, but we have a cladding wall on the outside of that. So in the next video, we'll look at how to amend this slightly in order to create a exterior hebel cladding panel with a, a baton or a top hat behind that. We won't be doing that for the internal walls and we'll be doing something different for the intertenancy or party walls, uh, but for at least the, um, let's separate that for a second, at least for these two, we'll have a look at how to make that into a composite wall.